pick your papers, trim and fold them, sort them and simply bind them. Making a junk journal is easy. Interesting page folds just add that magic. Today we're making a beginner friendly junk journal using just basic supplies and I've made lots of them as you can see here today and there are just so many fun ways once you've made one to fill them. Most of these on my desk have just one signature so let's show you. This has just one signature of papers which is the collection of papers that we fold and we trim and we bind them into the cover. You can see the signature bound in here. This has just one signature. Even this fat one has just one signature. If you wanted to, you could add more. On this one, you can see that there are two sets of binding just with string. So you can add as many signatures as you like. I'm just using book pages today and maybe a few pretty papers. So I've chosen to not use digitals or coffee dyed papers, but you could definitely integrate these if you want to. I like this method because it's fast, it's cheap, it's easy, and I feel like it's something that we can all do. What's really great about the page fold method, which I think adds the magic, is you get places that are super interesting and fun where you can fold down middle pages, you can tuck things in pockets, you can hide tags and journaling cards, or you can put more places to write. But what's even better about this method is at the end, as we put the signature into the cover, we avoid the need to trim the pages. So we don't need to go through that challenging step of cutting down this side. The page fold method means the pages are all the right size and we don't need to do that. So it's just really easy. The supplies that we're using today are listed on this sheet of process steps. So for my videos, I make a sheet of process steps, one, two, three, four process steps today. And this page will be in Pinterest and you can take a screenshot as well if you want to. I've listed the supplies out just in a box on the right here. So I thought we could go through those and I'll show you the pages that I've chosen and why I've picked the particular pieces of paper. So the papers are just sitting behind me here. I've got some really nice ones to share with you. In addition to those, you'll need something to bind your signature. So something to tie it all off. And the sewing method is really, really easy. So don't worry about that. So I use household string. So this is the kind of string you buy in a really cheap shop. It's very strong and that's partly why I like it. It's soft, so it feels really nice. And it's a bit less fiddly than maybe embroidery thread, which you could also use. So we also need a needle to do the binding and I'm going to use a new one today because I've lost mine and I use a darning needle, quite a large one and it has a little bit of a bend at the end which I quite like. Straight ones are fine too. To hold the papers together while we're doing the sewing, while we're binding the signature in, I like to use a peg and I've got a really old wooden one here. I use that when I can rather than a bulldog clip, which will still work because this is just a little bit kinder to the paper and leaves a bit less of an indentation as it grips compared with the bulldog clip, which you can obviously find in lots of different sizes. We will have available to use a pair of scissors and a trimmer. You could probably get away without the trimmer, but I think we would then need the scissors. And I've also got around me a stick of glue rather than more liquid glue. And I'll use that when I come to make the page pockets. Optionally, you may want to use an awl. So this is just a little tool you can find very cheaply. I got this for about four pounds on Amazon. And this will make your holes through the paper to make your sewing in of the signature really, really easy. But this is optional. So I put that down as optional. You don't have to have one of these. The first thing we need to do is pick our papers for the cover and for the signature that goes inside it. And I'm going to start with the cover because it defines the size of the papers that we're going to 
pull out, select, trim and fold. So that sets our boundary. And I've got a few suggestions for what you can use as covers so that you can maybe look at your own supplies and see what you have. So in no particular order, you could simply use a book page. And I've used book pages from children's books. They're quite thin, so it's not ideal, but you get some really great images. And I think they're they're a lot of fun. You can also get large book pages. I've just augmented these a little bit. On this one I've used, I think that's an old magazine and I've augmented it with my own artwork. For the cover on this one and also on this one I've used map pages. They're a little bit thicker so they work better maybe on smaller little traveller's notebook sized booklets and journals if you want to make those but I do enjoy using maps both inside the journal and as a cover as well so they're nice and soft and they feel really lovely. On this one the cover is craft cardstock and I've added a vintage book page I've stamped and coloured that in and I've just added a little annotation down here a little piece of paper here that says journal so I've just really decorated cardstock on this one. This is an old one, as is this one actually. This is an old alumni magazine, making good use of that. I've put some really nice tatty papers on the front and it's great because it's quite thick. So it's really good upcycling. And on this one, I took a large book page and then I actually collaged on the outside and then I went over it with some sewing so I used my sewing machine to add interest with zigzag and straight stitching and it gave it several layers and made it thicker. So there's no end to the ways in which you can use your book pages and craft supplies to make a cover. What I really really like and I want to share with you today is the, the gorgeousness of a particular book and the book that I'm going to use today is probably my all-time favourite for covers on a junk journal. So it's called A Victorian Flower Album by Henry Terry. And the reason I really like this is in one type of edition, we have not only absolutely incredible images, but we also have thick paper. So I've used this several times. I'm going to use it again. I just need to pick maybe a page in here that we use today and it really was spoilt for choice aren't we? What do you think? Do you think a botanical page from here would work really well? So how about just tear one of these out carefully. It's bound in really well and although it's got a tatty edge I really like that. I'm not going to trim that off and this will be my junk journal cover. Which side shall we have for the outside? What we want to do at this stage, oh I love the greens, what we want to do at this stage is decide how many signatures we want and I enjoy making my journals, making, making them chubby when I put things in them and I'm perfectly happy with just a single signature and it being a bit of an alligator mouth. It's your choice. If you want it to lie flatter then add more depth to the spine. I tend to say about 0.7 centimetres if you want to add an extra signature. So make your spine wider proportionately every time you add a signature to give it space to sew in. But today I think I'll keep things simple. So all I'm going to do is take my piece of thick paper from a book here and fold it over. And the size that this is, that just seems to work perfectly, is 26 and a half centimetres. So that is 10 and a half inches by, so the height of the journal will be just over 21 centimetres by eight and a bit inches. This size seems to work incredibly well for me for creating spreads and for adding things like envelopes and pockets and tags. I did start my journey by making smaller ones a bit like this size but I found that when I come to decorate I really like having a bit more real estate to play with. 
so something about that size is good for me so I would make the pages proportionately about that size. So all I've done is fold it over. I'll take a bone folder because I want it to be crisp and that's all I'll do for my cover. Now what I need to do is select some pages to go in it and I start my process by really just grabbing a whole pile and then whittling them down. So we're moving through step one and I've grabbed a pile of papers to whittle down to form the signature and I thought I'd explain why I've chosen what I've got here. There are more here than I need for the signature so the way I go about it is I just grab a whole load from around my craft room and then I reduce them to the 12 that I want to use to get the, the contrast and the variety in the pages. So this page comes from a book I wanted to share with you as well because it's a really great one if you want to look for it in a charity shop, a thrift store or maybe online. And it's this, it is a field guide in colour to wildflowers and you may know it. So it has lots and lots of pages with beautiful flowers. Also the paper is matte and a little bit off-white which looks really nice. They're actually divided into colours so that you could choose a page that marries with a colour palette if you want to choose a colour palette at this stage. And also for other projects, they're great for just tearing out by hand. I've done that and put them on the front of journal cards. So I did want to share this book and I've got a few other books to share as well that are absolute classics for making junk journals. So that page is great for those reasons. I really love the green. And in fact, as I started to pull the pages out, I formed a view about a colour palette and I think green works. This is a page from an old Dickens book, so one from the 1800s. It is absolutely beautiful, it's got that mellow aged colour and I love the font and that I think is great as a candidate. Even though it's thin, I can do something with that, maybe by turning it on its side, giving it a bit more strength by keeping it small when we fold it. I've got another book page, again just a different colour, so not all books are the same and we want the contrast, so pulling out pages with different colours is a great idea too. This looks like it's got a bit of sheen on it, I think I dunked this in acrylic wash with a bit of mica. This is the front cover from a book, so when you open a book and you have this, this sheet here, don't waste that, use that and it's often thicker. So that's a really good one to use. I choose pages with different fonts and I like bold black on some. I tend to have a page from a Shakespeare play. So I go through books about Shakespeare. That's lovely. I love the font on that and it's a different shape and size. Controversially, let me show you a few pages. I definitely use glossy book pages. And I use them because they are, first of all, they're easier to find, so they're cheaper to buy if you want to buy them in a thrift store. But they tend to have thicker paper, so it's easier to get paper, I think, that's thicker. And although it might be a bit glossy, so here's another example. I use a lot of children's book pages. These are perfect for folding into page pockets in your signature. And that will be one of the folds that I do today. I'll do several folds, all of the classics that go into my journals. Here's an example of another fairly glossy page. Glossy doesn't matter to me because I can choose in my journal if I want to cover it up. This is also slightly glossy, but it has beautiful images. So this is a book about, I think it's like an art history book and it has really nice pictures. So that's another example of, book, of a book you could look for. And this again would be perfect for folding, but maybe preserving one of the pictures in view. So we'll try and do a bit of that picture preservation as well. So here's another example that's rather dramatic. I also like black and white, just black and white pages in contrast to busy images. Something I like to make use of as a book page is one where you can pull it out and it's still got two sides, so it's joined. So if you can pull them out as a double, that's really great. And we'll try and make maximum use of that through the use of our page folds. I'm getting excited already. 
another rather thick page. Again, it's got some greens on it. As you can see, there's a theme. Definitely map pages. And even though this is glossy, I'm, I'm absolutely fine with that. So a map page is great to go in. I really like those. You can use the index pages from the back of your maps. And if you have any natural history books, I think they work really, really well. One with a beautiful butterfly and some vegetation down here. That's the inside page of a book. A piece of scrapbook paper has snuck in. Another classic is a dictionary page. It's whiter and it's thin, but it contrasts so well with the other pages. And then I have a page from a Rupert Bear annual, and I'll use that to show a specific fold, which is a pull down for the center of a signature, showing how you can preserve a really nice large image if you want to, if you want both sides of a page to show. So that's a good little technique. I've got some really old, beautiful ledger paper, an old weather diary with some nice handwriting, just a piece from an exercise book and some gorgeous vintage music paper, which is always really, really beautiful if you can incorporate that. So you can see there's a little bit of a random selection, but what I will do with each of these is just look at them, whittle them down to 12 and create a selection of pages that will give me that beautiful contrast for folds, for texture, for font, for colour, that beautiful selection that we want for our signature. So we're just about to move on to trimming and folding our pages and I've whittled them down to 12. But there's a checkpoint at this moment that I would suggest. And I've, I've designated some for specific page folds, which we'll do. But I've also decided I want to just slightly tweak what I've got here. And I think it's a great moment just to do that. So I have a book, a gardening book, which has got a really nice wide page. And I think I want to have one more of those. Oh, that's really nice, isn't it? In order to allow me to make another pocket or a page pocket. So I'll have one of those. I also wanted to have a bit more contrast and a bit more technical content. So this is a German dictionary. Oh, let's have a, let's have an F. So we'll have one of those, maybe easier to pull out a double and then just halve it. I just wanted a bit more contrast. And then I also wanted to just share another fantastic book. So one that I do use a lot for wildlife pictures, plus beautiful colour of paper, plus a great size and it's thick. What a winner. It's the National Trust Nature Companion. So just a few suggestions as to papers that you might want to use. So I've got two more here, which means I need to remove a couple. So I'll just do a shuffle, maybe take out my diary page. And should we remove the scrapbook paper? When then we're actually all vintage papers or book pages, let's do that. So what I can do now is start the folding, trimming process and give you some ideas for how to make the absolute most of all of the papers and trimming off as little as possible, which is one of the reasons I also love the fold out method, the paper folding method, because it means we keep as much of this beautiful paper and we see more of it in our junk journal. So with all of these, I just need to check how big I want the page to be in terms of height. So I've got my cover handy. For this one, I'm probably going to be influenced more, more by the image than just designing a page that actually matches the size of the journal. So I'm going to go down to there. It's at this point where you really need to just think through how to make the most of each page. So I'm going to make the most of the fact that it is a double because I haven't torn too much as I've removed it from the book. So I've got Thumbelina here. 
Let's retain as much of her as we can. What I will do is, first of all, I think I'll bend it the other way. And I think I'll just see how wide it needs to be and have that as something where I see the whole image when it comes out. I'm going to fold there. So I've got a fold out and I've also got a bit of a concertina going on here. So basically I've done a few folds so that that is preserved and I've not cut it off, which I would need to do had I just trimmed the page. What have I got at the back? The back is just text, so I don't mind having a really simple fold for this one. I think I will just fold it back, make sure that that is going to be small enough, which it is. Go to about there. So what I've done is I've looked at the paper, I've thought what do I want to make the most of and then what fold can I use to optimise that. So I can't do this by an absolute science. I think the thing to do is have a number of folds up your sleeve and then be able to apply them. So I've got one piece of paper, one page done. Right, the middle spread. Let me show you one that I've already done. So in this journal, I had an enormous page and I wanted to preserve the image. So I've done a fold on the right and then I have done a fold down for the centre. So you can see my old college. I've pre preserved the whole picture, nothing has been reduced. I've got the fold down that we need to do with my Rupert Bear page and I've actually also had to fold on the side there. But let's do something with Rupert Bear here so that we preserve the whole of him. I'm going to fold it in half to begin with. What I want to do is preserve the whole picture. It's one of those where it's far too tall of course but I felt like I didn't want to lose too much of this space here. And what we need to do is something like this where we can pull down but the page is still obviously bound in. So I'm going to fold up. I'm going to fold up about there. One fold up which reduces the height of my page so that the whole thing will fit in here just about done it and then I'm going to fold this back down I go to about there and all I will do when I bind this in is make sure that the holes in my page do not go through this bottom part they only go through the top part so that this sits on top so that is key when we come to do the binding so I've got a whole page preserved and I've just got a piece at the bottom that will pull down. So a large-ish piece of paper, lots of lovely images on it so we don't want to lose them. I think what I'd do with this is probably turn it on its side, think about where you want the ratty tatty edge to be, I'm okay with that at the top, I feel like I want these pictures down at the bottom of the page. I think with this one I would give it just a bit of an interned pocket like that and then fold the rest of it over so it has it's smaller but I'm still getting to see this, I'm getting to see this and I'm getting to see this. So that will be a pocket, I'll glue it in a minute. I'll set that aside, number three. I'm on a roll. Right, let's do Let's do a page with a pocket that comes up so that we can tuck things in it. So incredibly handy, really easy to do. Let's see if I can find one. So there's a pull out, really useful. There we go, just a page that's turned up and you can put lots of lovely goodies inside it. I'm going to not fold over in the middle to give this a bit of interest, but I am going to do my fold up. Choose how deep you want your pocket to be. 
You can obviously make the page not as deep, fold that over and I'm going to fold this down here. I think I'll just add interest then, not fold it in the middle. So I think I'll go to about, I'll go to about there, will it fit? Yes. And again, I can just do my gluing all in one go. You'll see what I've done is to help, I folded up and then I folded in so that the pocket is on the outside of the piece of paper. And that means we don't have to worry about gluing here. I'm just going to glue this gap here. In fact, if you wanted to, you could just use that as a tuck style page there. And then I also want to do a bit more of a gusset. So with this page, let's turn it on its side. That one needs trimming down. I've not used my trimmer much and I think it shows that you could do this project without having a trimmer. And also I would say you don't need a big trimmer. Let's take a bit of that off. You could do that with scissors and for a long time I did without a trimmer. And in fact, that was my first proper trimmer and it's done a whole load of jobs. It's a great one if you're interested in tools. So this is too wide for my journal. What I would do is, as I say, give it a bit of a gusset, which is literally doing a couple of mini folds to take out some of the width. So just fold it down, fold it back on itself, and you obviously have a page that is not as wide. And you can, if you choose, you want to preserve pictures, you can make pictures stay in a particular place and not hide them. So you put the gusset folds elsewhere, but it just gives you a little bit of, gives you some interest, but it gives you the ability to fit a page in that otherwise won't. So we'll add a gusset on the other side, just fold it back on itself and then give it another crease as deep as you want or keep the fish's head visible. So you can play with keeping the pictures, getting the most impact on your pages, but what you still have is a page that fits in your journal. So I've got something much narrower, I've still got my fish's head, I've got a nice green image on the back there and I've got something interesting going on. So I've got a gusset fold. We had the original concertina fold out. We've got the fold down for the middle. We've got a pocket page or two ready to be glued and we've got another pocket on the side ready to be glued. What I'll do is just simply fold the remaining pages and then add glue to these pockets just to finish them off. So I've trimmed and folded my papers and I've put them into two piles. This is the pile of the pages that just need a touch of glue to bind up the pockets. And these are the ones that are folded and don't need anything else. So let's just put a bit of glue in the right places. I ended up with that beautiful music page, turning it into a pocket that has pockets on the inside. And the reason I did that is was I felt that this image was just so beautiful I didn't want it tucked away. I wanted that to be visible at the front of the selection of signature pages. 
So on this one what I do need to do is add a touch of glue just down on the right and down on the left and it's very delicate. This is genuine vintage music paper. I'll just glue that there and there and I think because it will be bound in and it's not being a centre page I don't need to put glue in the middle. I'll let the signature, so another page will be on top like that, be what presses on and forms the division to the pocket. So I'm not going to put glue on the inside there, just put it on the outside. This is a bit simpler, this is just going to be a tuck pocket from the right. So that can go just there very easily, a nice glue stick a little bit of stick there and there's enough space to get something in. This is the one which is the traditional pocket by folding up the page and I really do only need to put glue down the right and left hand edges at the bottom here so that can go on. This glue stick I think is better than more liquid glue, it doesn't make the pages ruche uh, it keeps them robust and rigid, which is what I want. And then this one became an interesting one. I've got an image to preserve here. So I made the spine, the middle of the page, not to be in the centre. So it's off centre. So I'm going to have a pocket at the bottom there. And then let's see what else we need. We'll go like that. So I'll glue that down there, should have done this first, there we are, and I think I've just got a tiny bit of tuck space here and I don't need to glue here because that will be where I actually bind it in. There we go. So all of my pages are ready now, what do we need to do? We need to sort them into an order that creates contrast and then we need to peg them to hold them in place, ready to put the holes in and bind them. So the principles that I use for sorting them are to really vary what I've got. I said I wanted that to be impactful, so I want that near the front. And all I do is then See, I wouldn't put that next to it because it's another vanilla page. I look for contrast in the pages. This one has got structure to it, a pocket, so I might just choose a simple one like that. And then I might pick a different style, maybe this botanical one, to go there. And I'll just work through and divide up what I've got. And it's a good time to test that the pages fit both height wise, which I think mine do, and width wise. And I feel like this one is just a little bit challenging. So I'm going to take a bit of that off, off, make it more narrow, but only by adding a bit of a gusset. So I'll fold it back on itself. So I'll show you my, so my gusset involves adding, I've got one, two, three folds that I use, fold it back on itself, fold it forward and then fold it back again and I end up with a page that isn't as wide and it's one way you can see, so one, two, three, a valley, top of a mountain and a valley, fold it over push it down and I've got a page that isn't too wide. So that should mean I can now put my pegs on, put some holes in and then bind it together. So when you're coming to put your pegs or your bulldog clips on, just give your papers a really good shuffle and I take a ruler and just press down on that inside there and it gives it a bit more 
brings the papers together basically, puts them all in the place where you want them to be. Yes, that's going to fit absolutely perfectly. And holding those in place, I'm going to add a couple of pegs. These are so useful for holding your papers in place. And I'm going to put three holes in here before I try to sew. And the key to binding with a pull down pocket or a pull down page in the middle here to so make sure you don't put your holes through this piece here. So I'll pull that out while I am making my holes and making my hole marks. And I'm going to make a hole about six centimetres above and below that so that the holes are spread out and that means that it just allows the binding to be strong enough. If you put them too close I don't think it's going to be as good at holding the papers in without tearing them. So I now need to take my awl and make a hole through the papers. So I've got my three holes, I need holes in the same place in the cover. So I'm going to use where I can see the holes are to tell me where to make holes in this. And this is the way to reduce the risk of it not fitting. So no matter how accurate we are when we measure, we sometimes let the papers move as these have down here. So I'm going to take my pencil, make a mark where the holes have actually come through. One, two, three. I think I'll use my needle just to punch a hole for those. One, two, three. And then I'm going to take my string and I go for one, two, three. One for the pot. Cut that off. It's got a nice big eye and I like to bind so that when it's finished the string is visible. So I like to bind and have a little bit of a, a dangle bit there. So I start from the outside and work in. So I take my needle and I go to the top hole, just push that in. And then I find the equivalent hole in my signature it's always going to be most difficult to do the first one. So I've come through at the top, I'm going to go through this signature from the outside as well. So I'll just get my needle through there and then I'll go through the middle from the centre. So through the middle hole, pull that through. Once you've done the centre hole, the pages should hold together better. And I'll take my needle and go through the middle hole in the cover. This is called a figure of eight method, which is very, very simple. I'll go back through that hole, bottom, bring that through, and then find the hole in the bottom of this. So keeping this piece down, pull my needle through. At this point I might release the peg. And remember to keep your length of string through here and don't let it pull through. And probably turn it round and I'm going to go back through the middle hole again trying not to split the string as we push our needle through. And we can see that the
pages are all fitting within, so that's really good, both this way and that way. And if I fold it over, I've got just enough chunkiness, so I'll just tighten this up and tie it in a bow. How to make a junk journal, best tips for folding the pages. If you've enjoyed this video, then don't forget to subscribe and check out my playlist of videos where I make ephemera. So that's pockets, tags, journal cards, all sorts of things for putting in your journal. I hope to see you soon.